Hello, everyone. I have been meditating on the scriptures today, and I know I normally don't get on here on Fridays, but I missed getting on here yesterday because I had a little emergency. I broke a contact lens in my eye. This is the second time I've done this, and it was extremely painful. Had to go to the eye doctor and actually they had to fish it out of my eye. So <laughs> that was a fun day and kind of took me by surprise. But nevertheless, my eye is feeling better. Uh, they weren't sure that they got it all. I think maybe they did or some of it came out on its own. But um, my eye is better, praise the Lord. <laughs> I meant to come on yesterday and just share some thoughts about prayer. And, um, you know, the Lord has really been laying some things on my heart lately about prayer and the importance of prayer. And I've been meditating on this one particular parable all week um, in Luke chapter 18, the parable of the persistent widow. <clears throat> Maybe you know this parable, but the Lord brought it to remembrance because there have been so many things lately to pray about and so many people that I know lately that are just going through devastating times in their lives. And I don't know about you, but lately, the Lord has been waking me up in the middle of the night to pray for different people. He'll just give me names and wake me up during the night to pray. And sometimes during the day when I'm cleaning or, hello, Sister Myrna, glad you're here. Sometimes when I'm cleaning the house or taking care of, you know, the daily business of life, the Lord will bring people to my mind that um, he wants me to pray about. And so I stop and pray for those things. And I'm noticing in this season now more than ever that I, in particular, am being called to pray more. I don't know if you guys out there, there are experiencing this too, but it seems as if I'm praying without ceasing lately. And the Lord just keeps bringing people to my heart and mind and waking me up in, in the night to pray over those things. <clears throat> and I just know some people right now, they're just going through really difficult times, sickness, um, things that are just totally out of their control, and, you know, what do you do in those situations? You pray that when there's nothing you can earthly do to help the situation, I, I pray. And I had a sister overseas send me an email yesterday from India, and she said, India is just devastated right now with COVID. And she they're basically being told to stay in their homes and not come out. The markets are shut down. There's no food. And if you've ever been to India, it's already a, a poverty-stricken nation. And so to have everything shut down and no markets open, it's just devastating to the poor there. And she was just reaching out and saying, can you please pray for me and and those I work with. And she sent me a whole list of pastors who have either lost a loved one or has died themselves. And um, she, I could just sense the pain and the heartache in her email. And then, you know, I have various friends who are struggling with health concerns, cancer, and my, you know, my own husband um, is um, going through radiation treatments right now. 
and various family members going through different health challenges and struggles. And so there's much to pray about. And I mean, just what's happening in our own country right now with the border. And then I, I saw on the news today that 90 people were found in a home in Texas who had been smuggled into our country and they were nearly starving to death and, and hiding in a home. This, this has got to break the heart of God and it has to break our hearts if it breaks God's heart, right? All of the suffering going on right now, the, and some of it's just needless suffering. Um, and it's just a call to pray. What do we do when we can't do anything about it? We need to pray. Prayer is the most important thing we can do in our walk. Prayer is work. And prayer is concentrating and focusing on, you know, the Lord and what he can do. You know, the Lord can do more in five minutes with a situation than than we can do in five years. And I don't know why we don't go to him first, right? But I was reading this parable and it made me think about a few things. And then I wanna pray. And yes, Myrna, I will pray for your unspoken request. In Luke chapter 18, and I hope you'll go and read this. It's a very short parable, but it's powerful. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. You know, prayer strengthens us in our inner being. Prayer um, lifts us up in dark moments. I can't think of a time where I ever went to the Lord in prayer brokenhearted, where he didn't touch me in some way to make me feel better after praying. There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. So this unrighteous judge who didn't care about God or men at all um, basically said, I'm going to answer this widow's request because she's driving me crazy, right? But the persistence of that widow, think about it. The persistence of that widow constantly coming got her what she needed. And this is a lesson to us as believers. The persistence in prayer, the persistence in going to God and not giving up. I think sometimes we quit praying at the moment when God is ready to do something big and there's about to be a breakthrough, we quit, we lose heart, we lose faith, we, we grow weary. God is saying, see it through, see it to the end. Be like the persistent widow, just keep coming. Don't give up, keep working at it. Prayer is work. We're required to do the work. <clears throat> then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? And shall God, who is the righteous judge, who we cry out to day and night, who bears with us in our burdens, I tell you, that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? This suggests to me that 
<clears throat> when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Will he really find you praying and watching? Will he really find you persistently pressing in? persistently digging in, digging your heels in, ladies. You've, if you've ever heard a wo woman say that, my grandmother used to say that to me, Autumn, dig your heels in. Don't stop. There is something about praying it through, praying it through to the end until God gives an answer. You know, <clears throat> I once had a person say to me, the Lord heard you the first time you prayed. Yes, he did. But sometimes I think he wants to know, are you invested? Are you invested like this widow? I'm going to keep on coming till I get what I want. I'm going to keep on knocking on your door till I get what I want, till I get an answer that I need. You know, sometimes God's answer isn't what we expected, but that's okay. God answers in the way that's going to be best for us. God answers in a way that shows his glory, that shines a light into situations, that helps us remember that he's in control. And quite honestly, he wants us to be a testimony before the world. And so... That persistent prayer helps us speak to the world as a living testimony, a walking testament of what God can do in our lives. I just think about the woman who touched the hem of Jesus's garment. She was thinking to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, then I would be healed. And what did she do? She pressed into the crowd. She reached out and she touched the hem of his garment. Instantly, she was healed. And it was so instant that Jesus realized power had come out of him. He said, who touched me? And, you know, the disciples are going, Lord, do you see the crowd? He said, yes, but someone touched me because power went out of me. Her faith, her faith, her persistence to go after the Lord's garment. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I would be healed. She pressed in, press in with prayer, be persistent. And remember, we ought always to pray and not lose heart. Jesus often found a place to pray. The Bible says he prayed in the wilderness. He would go into the mountains and pray. He would find a quiet place to pray away from the crowds. You know, we need to take the Lord's example on this. We need to find a place that's our place of prayer. You know, I, I have a couple of hours every morning that I like to spend in quiet time with the Lord, but, and I dedicate that time to the Lord. If I don't do it, it just seems like my day goes all wrong. But throughout the day, as the Lord drops names into my mind, I pray for those people. And I let them know I prayed for them. I let them know that they were on the heart of God and that he reminded me of them. Do you know what an encouragement that is? One sister, the Lord woke me up recently. It's about a month or so ago. And said, told me specifically to pray for this sister. So I did. I woke up in the night and I prayed for her. And then the next morning... I sent her a text message and I just said, boy, you must be pretty important. The Lord thought it was a good idea to wake me up in the middle of the night to pray for you. Not a good idea. <laughs> but <clears throat> I did pray for her and I found out she didn't answer me for a day. It was maybe a day later. She said, you have no idea what that meant. She said, I just received the worst news of my life. 
and just knowing that I was on the heart of God and you reminded me that the Lord was thinking about my situation. And so you never know why God is asking you to pray for someone. You never know the reason he woke you up or the reason he keeps bringing that person. If the Lord brings somebody's name to my mind more than once, I know he's asking me to pray for them, but I also know he's asking me to reach out to them. So I do it every time. And he has never failed me yet in letting me know through that person that it was at a critical moment that he had me pray. So just remember that. You know, I believe that we are all supposed to be watchmen on the wall. And part of being a watchman on the wall in the kingdom of God is to be praying interceding for one another, interceding for the troubles in this world, interceding for lost family and friends, interceding for lost souls. The kingdom of God is about bringing as many souls in as we can. We have to stay in touch with what our mission is in the Lord, and that is to pray and seek out the lost and tell them about Jesus so that they can be saved. Amen? Yes, Sister Corliss, I, I know exactly how, what, you're, what situation you're in. My mother has dementia, and I will definitely be praying for her. And Sister Myrna, I'll be praying as well for your unspoken situation. So I'm going to close with this. Just remember persistence. Sometimes all it takes is just a little whisper prayer. One time I remember I whispered a prayer. Um, I just wasn't happy with um, the current situation in my life. This was a few years ago. And I just remember saying to the Lord, Lord, if you change this, I will dedicate my work and my heart and service to you. It, that's all I said. It wasn't any big theological prayer. You know, I didn't see fire come down from heaven. It was just that simple. And the next day, literally, the situation was turning around. And I saw God opening a door that I never saw open before. So you see, don't give up. Be persistent. Pray for the people that God puts in front of you. You know, don't give up on your situation. Pray for your situation. God wants to work in those things, and he wants to get all the glory for the work being done. Amen? Amen. So, Father, I come before you, thanking you and praising you, Lord, for your goodness, first of all, because you are a good, good father who only knows how to give his children good gifts because you are the creator God of the heavens and the earth. You knit us together in our mother's womb, Lord. You knew us before we were born. You formed us from the dust of the earth and then you breathed life to, into us. Surely, Lord, if you can do all of that, you have the answer to our needs. You have the answer to our problems. Lord, I just lift up Sister Corliss's mom to you. And I just pray for you to touch her in her heart, mind, and soul, Lord. I just pray that you would speak to her body. I pray that you'd bring her into her right mind. Lord, I pray that you will just encourage her in the spirit. Father God, you have, you are the creator God. You knew how she was created. You knew, you know what's going on in her body. And so Lord, we fully trust in you for the healing that can take place. In the meantime, Lord, I pray that you would encourage Sister Corliss. You would give her everything she needs as she 
cares for her mother, as she watches over her health care, as she watches over her life, Lord. I just pray that you'll give her every provision that she needs so that she can care for her mother effectively. Lord, I lift up Sister Myrna's um, unspoken request. You know what's going on there, Lord, and you know the need. Lord, you are able, we believe you are able to do great and mighty works concerning this unspoken situation. Lord, your arm is not too short that you cannot reach down and save in this situation, Lord. I just pray that you would cover it, that you would give my sister peace, the peace that passes all understanding, I pray that you will show her that you will never leave her or forsake her, that you are able to give beauty for ashes, that you are able to give back the years that the locusts have eaten, and that there is nothing too hard for you. Lord, we thank you ahead of time for what you're going to do. Lord, I just pray for breakthroughs in the lives of those who are watching. I pray for prayers to be answered. Lord, I pray that you will teach us to be persistent in our prayer life. Teach us to pray and not give up. Teach us to pray and not grow weary. Teach us to keep knocking, Lord, until the answer comes. And Father God, help us to remember that you will grant the request in your time. Help us to remember, Lord, that you love us more than any, anyone on this earth could possibly love us, and you are deeply concerned with our hurts, our needs, our provision, our health, our finances. Lord, I just pray over every aspect of our lives, Lord. I rebuke anything that the enemy might come against our finances. I break those assignments in the name of Jesus. I break the assignment of discouragement over some. I break the assignment from the enemy of depression over some. In the name of Jesus, I pray for healing, wholeness, and a sound mind. Father, I just pray for those who are finding that their flesh is winning the war lately. Lord, that you would strengthen them in their spirit, that you would help them to turn away from their sins and look to you, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, that sin, the sin that separates us, Lord, from you, that you would help us to crush that crush the head of the serpent in our lives. Lord Jesus, help us to be more than conquerors. Help us to be overcomers in this life. Help us to be a walking and living testimony of your power at work. And Lord, I just pray for our nation. The Bible says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. It breaks my heart that sin is just running rampant right now. It breaks my heart that I can see those who have fallen into deception, who have decided that they'll just stay home and watch church on TV who have decided not to fellowship with believers anymore, Lord. The Bible speaks of this great falling away, Lord, and I pray for the believers who are settling, Lord. I pray that they will no longer settle, but that their desire would be for you to hunger and thirst after you, to hunger and thirst after righteousness. As a deer pants for the waters, Lord, so our soul would long after you. Lord, in the book of Jeremiah, it said, it, 
it talked of Jeremiah's day and how the people had turned away from God. And, and you described it this way in the book of Jeremiah. You said, my people have exchanged the living water for broken wells. Lord, forgive us for exchanging your love, for exchanging the living water for broken wells. Forgive us for taking our eyes off of you. Forgive us, Lord, for not listening to your voice and not obeying your word. Draw us back to you. Draw us back into your presence. Sustain us, Lord. Keep us, Lord. Watch over us. But, Lord, help us to remember daily just to pray, just to call out to you, just to cry out to you so that you can deliver us, so that you can answer our prayers because, Lord, this builds our faith and this strengthens us. Remind us that when we pray, we grow. Remind us that when we call on you, we see your work. We see your hand. Help us not to forget to call on you first. <clears throat> your word says, call to me and I will answer you, and I will show you great and hidden things, great and unsearchable things. Lord, I want to know the great and unsearchable things of the kingdom and of you. I want to know more about you. I want to go deeper with you. Help us to grow deeper in you, Lord, and be strengthened by you. And give us everything that we need to walk in victory. To fully trust in you. To remember that you will walk through us in the fire. With, you will walk through the fire with us. And the water will not overtake us. And we know, Lord, that when we wait on you, we will mount up with wings like eagles. We will run and not grow weary. We will walk and not faint. Those are your promises. That's what your word says to us. Let us be strengthened by the word. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Lord, I pray for the sisters and the sister in India, Lord, the missionary that's just suffering, Lord, give her food, give her provision, provide for her. Lord, I pray, kill off this COVID virus. In the name of Jesus, I just pray that it would be eradicated. Our missionary brothers and sisters around the world are suffering greatly because of this. Lord, our sister in Pakistan who wants to do outreaches and hand out Bibles. She said there's a third wave of COVID happening there right now. Would you protect her? Would you protect her church? Would you protect the women's ministry there under the International Women's Ministry umbrella? Would you make provision for them? Would you keep them from becoming sick? Put a hedge of protection around them. You are able, Lord. Open the door for us to travel again. Open the door for us to go and tell the good news of Jesus Christ. Open the door for us to go and encourage those suffering sisters working in mission fields and dark places where the gospel has not been heard. Lord, I believe a revival is coming. I believe the revival is coming, Lord. And I believe when the doors finally open for us to go, that the harvest fields will be white and ready. Lord, let us be supernaturally ready to go. Gird us, Lord, with your power so that when the time is right, we can go in the power and unction of the Holy Spirit and nothing 
will thwart your plan for us to do this. Protect us, Lord. Keep us. Watch over us. Guard those who are listening, Lord. Guard their health. Guard their hearts and guard their minds. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for hopping on here and, and praying with me. And listen, anytime you have something you want to pray about, just kick me a message. I believe in this season I'm going to be praying and interceding for others. And the Lord has great things on the horizon. Soon the doors will open and, and we believers are going to have to be about the Father's business like never before. And I don't know about you, but I'm praying that I will be equipped to do it. I don't want to waste any more time, have any more idle time doing frivolous things. It's time to be about the Father's business. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great weekend, okay?